Hey, what's up? This is the Flyover Libertarian Podcast, where three unimportant people from an unimportant place give you the opinion that you didn't ask for. I'm Josh, a.k.a. Iowan Cap. I'm, uh... And I'm... Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> he over, he's, uh... That one over there is the real Rothbard. And that's Darabelli. And that... And we oh, are professionals. Yep. yep, we're doing great, guys. <laughs> Well, uh, if you can't tell, it's been a while. So, uh, r- right now, uh, there is a craze sl- sweeping the Libertarian Party. E- either it's a craze if you're on the side of the Mises Caucus, or it's a scourge and a disease if you're not on the side of the Mises Caucus. Uh, but uh, whatever your opinion, it's clearly doing something. Um, recently they've taken over some pretty high profile state parties, uh, New Hampshire and Nevada being the most noteworthy ones. Uh, uh, one, uh, in, in Nevada, I think they were the force behind our former glorious leader, uh, Nicholas CIA Starwark. Uh, they're the force behind him losing to none of the above. And then uh, they decided they were going to take Nevada, which has been uh, kind of a thorn in the Liberty Movement side, the LP of Nevada. They dedicated an entire week to uh, hating on Ron Paul, which was the moment we all knew they had to go. And so they took it back, and already they've purged the entire Twitter feed. And... uh, have started fresh basically and and uh so whatever the opinion they're making waves and uh we don't know they're they're kind of i would say it seems to me this is just my impression that among us it's not so much that there are differing opinions as uh differing levels of excitement about uh the mises caucus is that is that maybe accurate uh, among us three, I think so, yeah. Varying from not sure what it is to uh, volunteer. To, uh, yeah, to somehow I got roped into organizing. Um, yeah, so I guess I can say speak for myself. Um, I'm, I'm in. Uh, I kind of got, I, I got, I, I'll say this, I, was, I became curious um, with Josh Smith's, Josh Smith's first chair run. Um, but then the Mises Caucus wasn't a thing yet. That was just Josh Smith deciding he was going to be a libertarian running for the Libertarian National uh, Chair. And uh, the second time, it, it, he was kind of, as he likes to say, um, taking the Mises um, brand on his back and taking it with him everywhere he went. Um, and uh, now he's actually uh, he's actually dropped out of the chair race for this cycle. Um, but we've got another person running for it that we think has has some really good chances. Um, a woman named uh, Angela McArdle. Um, she's a uh, she's been a big force in the uh, Libertarian uh, Party of California, and um, it seems like she has a really good chance of taking the chair. Um, we I know we know we won't we won't know until we get there. Um, but but really the big thing is that the they really got serious about. Becoming a force in state um, affiliates, and they've there's been many state affiliates that have gone uh, to control of Mises affiliated people, and uh, it's uh, it's been kind of a bit of a ride. And anyway, I like I said, I'm I, I got in uh, at the behest of Tom Woods, Dave Smith. And Scott Horton, and I would say that the the last was the biggest one for me. Tom Woods and Dave Smith on their show started getting in on it and started getting excited about it, which I I was kind of like, I guess I was interested, but weirdly it was when Scott Horton threw in that I was like, whoa, what? Um, because he he largely just doesn't seem like a joiner, and doesn't seem like a party guy in general. Like he's he's just such a stay in his lane, anti war guy. Um. And then when he's the one, when he starts talking about it and being like, "Hey, we got to get in on this. We got to get behind this Hornberger guy. 
and that's when I um, <clears throat> really joined the Mises team. I actually finally joined the party, and I uh, started uh, getting in on some of the Mises uh, Facebook groups and stuff like that. And um, uh, even though I, I as, as I very publicly stated on our own podcast, had some uh, disagreements with Hornberger in the end, uh, I still was on the Mises team. And <clears throat> recently, as I like to say, I was uh, bamboozled into becoming an organizer for the state of Iowa because um, I, I had a, uh, I was uh, the, the main guy in charge of organizers, uh, organizing nationwide. His name is Jeff. He uh, sent me a message after I kind of uh, made, made a, bit, a little bit of a post on our state aff uh, affiliate Facebook page. Um, and he asked if I'd like to know more about what's going on in the Mises Caucus. And I was like, sure, I'd love to know more. And then uh, I find out this is an organizer meeting, and I've just been bamboozled and railroaded. So, <laughs> You've been uh, Shanghai. so here I am. Uh, here I am, one of a, a few organizers for the state of Iowa. And uh, so, yeah, I'd say I, I bought in pretty hard about it. Um, uh, I, I guess I, I echo what Josh Smith has been saying a lot lately, which is uh, he's been going around. Uh, he made the rounds on, like, Mad Ones. I uh, had a debate with, uh, I think, Larkin Rose on it. And he basically said, it's not that this is the only way, he said, but it's one way. It's one tool that we, should, we can use to move the needle. And that's kind of, I guess, my, my position as well. It's not so much that I think that the political means is the best or the only means, but it is a means to get the message out there. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've kind of gotten in on that. Well, what is the Mises Caucus all about, man? Sure, oh, sure. That's, uh, that's a good question. For, um, the best way I've heard it, um, well, this is the way I described it once. It's like... It's like the Libertarian Party if the Libertarian Party didn't suck. Uh, or, or as other people have called it, the Libertarian Wing of the Libertarian Party. It's basically the idea that uh, the, uh, the Libertarian Party should have a Misesian Rothbardian representative. That the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, lowercase l Libertarian movement that has been uh, has left the party in droves for large, largely good reasons. Um, basically, they noticed that if all the lowercase l libertarians came back into the party, we would take it back. And, uh, and that is the plan, is essentially to get the lowercase l libertarians back into the party so that we can take it and make it the, the party of Mises and Rothbard again, and, and the party of Ron Paul, and... Um, one of the big things that they do is to say, you know, really, it's not that we are, or I guess I'll say it from my perspective. It's not that the Mises Caucus is the conservative libertarian or right libertarian uh, caucus, which is what most people will brand it as. It's that it's the caucus that doesn't say you have to be a leftist to be a libertarian. Uh, it's about ditching the woke uh, virtue signaling bullcrap. And uh, getting back to, you know, what, what Rothbard called thin libertarianism, focusing on property rights, um, non-aggression principles, self-ownership, and getting all of this extra stuff out of here. And it does make room for, like as I've said before, I am, I am a conservative libertarian or right-wing-ish libertarian. And... Uh, and it's making room for us because it seems kind of silly to me to try and run out a large voting block. And so it's about bringing them back into the party, um, being the thin, the party of thin libertarianism again. Uh, yeah. This is both about trying to get more votes and also sucking less. So you think if you suck less, you'll get more votes. Well, I think, I think one big thing that we know that that's been noticed is Ron Paul did remarkably well in a very hostile Republican Party. Like, when Ron Paul started doing his thing, uh, it was the party of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, and they were the ones who had run the show for the longest time. John McCain 
was the front runner. Uh, it was all about the you know banging the drums of war, and he did remarkably well because what happened when he came out and he unapologetically swung for the fences with his libertarian principles, uh, people people became interested, people became curious, and people came looking. And uh, so why haven't we seen that again with the Libertarian Party? Uh, because our candidates have not been that. Our candidates have been largely pathetic. Uh, uh, milk toast, to quote Tom milk, Woods. Yeah. Yeah, milk toast, former re- former Republicans, which you know, no no shade on former Republicans if you're gonna actually be libertarian about it. Um but uh yeah, it's it's been they've been just pathetic and like and it's been honestly like I, I was I, I know at first the Mises caucus tried to act and maybe they're still trying to act like they were excited about Joe Jorgensen, but honestly she was just not interesting un uninteresting and see i found that part interesting because she her actual platforms there wasn't anything uh particularly wrong with the platform as a whole right but the i think i'm understanding the problem better now that it the whole point of the mises caucus was to talk focus on the the um the principled things and to focus on truths that aren't getting covered by other parties and to to water that down even a little bit you just lose the fire completely and so it's not even worth doing if you can't focus on this yeah so we know now that the uh the famous tweet the uh we must be anti-racist tweet um that was part of a coordinated effort that was the plan of the of the Jorgensen campaign they were going to out left the left, but they did it in the dumbest way possible. They went the they went for the woke direction. Like there's other ways. Like it's it's not like it's a bad idea to like try and out le- outflank the left. Scott Horton always talks about that. About how you can at least hold them to the their principles. The yeah. Yeah, you can attack the left from the left. You can p- take the good principles of of leftism, but they went for the woke left bullcrap. And the thing about that is if they had just Listen to even six words of Michael Malice, they would have known that's the stupidest plan. Because the woke, they are not going to go for, they're not going to jump ranks. They're not going to go for someone who's like, hey, you think that's, uh, hey, you, you want to fight system- systemic racism? You should care about the Federal Reserve. Like, they're, you're not going to get, it's a, it's a thoroughly irrational movement. In fact, it's, they, they, they almost are happily irrational. Like it's it's a it's almost a rejection of rationality that whole movement and, and and I don't and I don't mean that in a mocking way I mean they say math is racist that that's a whole it, 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 that that's their whole thing it's 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 all about it literally is all about emotion this isn't straw manning it is about well how do you feel how do you feel is what matters we are not going to win with the how you feel matters crowd and and we're not going to out systemic racism the left who says yeah and we're going to fight systemic racism by giving you more money like we're just not going to beat them it was the worst part of the left to go after there was so many better ways to go after the left for instance let's just go for the anti-war crew the anti-war right have been severely let down by donald trump and the anti-war left never really trusted the guy uh and so if we had just gone hard about that like think about what we could have done or even take like the Federal Reserve example, which, you know, again, first time I hear about it, I think it's the nerdiest thing to go after. But really, that is the source of the rich cats getting richer. We could have outlefted the left by doing that, by being like, hey, check out this banking cartel that keeps funneling money into the hands of fat cats at the expense of you and me. Like, we could have outlefted the left that way. But instead, they decided to do the woke crap, and it was a dumb move. And, and not only that, like I, I tweeted a little while ago, I was like, it's not only that I thought it was a bad political strategy, I think it sucks. And so we shouldn't do things that suck. Like that, that it's, it's not a move that is conducive to liberty. Pitting the populace against each other, that's not a good idea. Like it's pitting neighbors against neighbor on the basis of their skin and stupid crap like that. Like I think it's a, it was a dumb thing to be for. And I'm tired of acting like it wasn't. Let's just stop being SJW 
morons from the perspective of a couple people who aren't fully on board, but maybe tangentially on board. Like what, what kind of thing holds you back? Is it simply just lack of time and interest or, or what would you say it is? Uh, the, the people who reject uh, political organization and, and political um, uh, means to liberty, those guys like the Agris, they, their their argument is like you have limited time and limited resources and limited influence. Like, why would you spend it trying to achieve liberty in a system where it's like it's not going to happen? Like, the odds are against you, the incentives are against you. It's maybe even morally improper to do so in this system. You just have to escape the system. I think there's some merit to that, but I also think. Um, this is like uh, this is kind of like spontaneous organization. It's like the people that naturally do well in this arena can go to this arena, and the people that just want to succeed and uh, achieve their agorist paradise, like they can do that too. And I think both both work. And so to try and say that to try to centrally plan the liberty movement is just kind of like a, a funny irony because it's like, why would you tell them how to achieve liberty? Like the whole point is decentralization here. Or don't we think that's a better design pattern, really? Well, the, I think, um, like, my, uh, this is always my response. Okay, so the agorist idea sounds really good. Until the cops show up at your door uh, and throw you in prison for, for, for gathering rainwater. You know, like, it's, it's and, and, and that's not to say that they're wrong. And it's not even to say that they're abs. Like I'm not even like I mean it does. It's not to say they're wrong. I'm just saying like I think there's a level at which, um, we all think our side of the battlefield is the hardest and most important part of the battlefield. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the soldier on the west bank thinks that that's the most fierce fighting because that's where they see, and that's where they see the battle being worth winning, um, because they put so much work into it and they see a, a way of victory. Um. But we've got multiple fronts, and that's really where I, where I see this is that um, there should be some on the political front. Like for instance, like most of us have come to a political philosophy, come to this political philosophy um, because, uh, well, for, well, for various for various reasons. Like I came largely because of the academic and intellectual philosophy of, of libertarianism. Like it was, uh, it, it satisfied my intellectual curiosity. Many, many libertarians, though, are here because of an election, um, whether it was Ron Paul's election or even Gary Johnson's election, uh, which, uh, it, which did have an effect, or even you can go back to Harry Brown's election, that um, their running, uh, their, their race, uh, political races, did red pill a lot of people and lead them into a liberty movement. Uh, and what's really interesting is that a lot of the people who I hear say, Ron Paul made me a libertarian. Will then go on to say, um, and we can't, and political, political, uh, the political arena will have no positive outcomes. I'm like, what do you mean? You're a positive outcome of the political arena. I think we need to re, um, redefine our definition of winning, and then the political arena can be useful again. Like I, I as as a tool of red pilling and uh, mainstreaming the ideas, and and, the, and filtering them into um, either the intellectual area or the agorist area or the 2a area or the crypto anarchy area like there's from from there there's a lot of ways to to go but i think some people have to be in the political arena and i think there's ways to support the political means without going a hundred percent in um if that makes sense like you can you can show up at a convention and uh say we're the mises folks and just hang out with them and be like, all right, what do I need to be? What do I need to support? You guys have been paying attention, you know, like you say, uh, division of labor. You guys have been paying attention. What do I need to do? What do I need to support? Who do I vote for? You know, things like that. And then say, then then leave the convention and go back to your, uh, to your your, uh, to your agora and uh, and 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 three D printer and 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 do what you do. You know, my opinions on this, like I. Honestly, I didn't know what the Mises Caucus was until you started talking, Josh. I mean, I was aware that it existed, or aware that uh, it was what you supported, and I was aware that it's pretty much just going off the memes. It's kind of where I where I find myself in the libertarian uh, world. Um, 
But my issue is practicality always where um I support people uh running for you know national level uh libertarian um races running on platforms um but practically speaking uh they're not going to win um and so I have a difficulty um wanting to put my energy or thought into that knowing that at the end of the game in my judgment of 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 um considering that all the benefits it's just not worth the effort um i would be much more inclined to support somebody on the state level um where there's a somebody running for governor um on a libertarian ticket that person has a much uh higher likelihood of scoring well in the votes um and then just just walking that down at the county level at the city level um the the smaller the government the more i'm likely to support it which again is i mean that's the whole libertarian uh, ideal right there um governments are more effective and more in touch with reality uh the smaller they are and and the fewer people they oversee um so i just i just have a difficulty wanting to support large organizations and again i think um mr rothbard uh summed it up pretty well it's it's ironic trying to centrally plan the liberty move, movement on the other hand i uh there's like nothing about what you've said that i disagree with that uh in the, the free market the non-aggression principle all of that is the i mean is the only logical conclusion to anything that could ever be considered conservative um and i fully support that like even even um even agorism in terms of the counter economics yeah it 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 doesn't really work like then and that and then here I am getting onto my Christian soapbox where none of this is actually a solution, and that's also where I get hung up like the the, the world does not need libertarians, the world needs jesus um and i I have a hard time like wanting to try because that's not that's i I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking myself into a corner here. Um, there's a t-shirt out there in the Bitcoin world. Again, you guys invited me on because of Bitcoin. Um, that it's, it's got four lines of text. From top to bottom, it says Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, Bitcoiner. And the top three are crossed off. And the implication is that, like, I guess that uh, Bitcoiner is the next logical step from left to right to libertarian um and while okay no i just need to i just need to admit it i uh i think i could wear that shirt in public where like i don't know if i could technically call myself a libertarian anymore because i don't think it's practical enough um where for me bitcoin is the the libertarian ideal applied in the real world if people want to commit to x invasion which of course i do not recommend um they can do so um all, all these all these uh all these ideals in the libertarian uh realm in the agorist realm um are actually implementable um up to the point where then they're not and then the world still needs jesus so i really don't know what i believe yeah again i think it comes down to me asking like so what what do we define as victory like, I think we can, um, if, if what we mean by political means, victory in the political means is controlling the halls of power, not only do I think it's maybe not practical for a libertarian to win, I don't think it's desirable. I, I don't really want libertarians to win national elections. Uh, however, like you talk about, like, local elections, um, the biggest problem with winning local elections is that if you are running as a libertarian, now, of course, you know, some people would say, don't run as a libertarian, then just run as a Republican or a Democrat. But if you want to win as a Republican on the local level, it's a lot easier to get into the race if you are part of a party that is nationally recognized. And there is a 10% threshold, uh, and this is not a, na a na nationwide threshold, there's a threshold per state uh, to uh, major party status. So we attain, uh, for instance, the Libertarian Party of Iowa attained major party status at which point we were given we did not have to get signatures in order to run a candidate um in the state of iowa we attained that in the uh gary johnson election 
the second Gary Johnson election, and then we lost it in the governor election. So it's kind of that's that's the rule in the state of Iowa is, is it's based on the top of the ticket. Um, so the presidential election and the um, and the governor election is what what sides with their local um, local libertarians can run without having to get signatures. And honestly, especially because most of the time the, the two parties don't like giving up their ballot access. So they are they often make it as hard as possible on the third parties to get a candidate on the ballot. Um but I think there's there's a there's an aspect of that like where where um the political means on the nation on the national level is helpful for getting uh political access on the local level. Um and again, I would also again like the, the question of victory, like what is a win is something that I really um that I really ask sometimes is like um growth is a win like um small steps i i consider wins like i i'm not looking for um uh taking over the world i'm looking for small victories because i think small victories is how we're going to accomplish major victories and like for instance like it, it's it's great for a few people to get into crypto anarchy and bitcoin and and all that stuff um but how much better if we get a lot of people into it. And so I think there's a sense in which, you know, if, if Bitcoin is the logical conclusion to libertarianism, then we still need libertarianism to funnel people over to Bitcoin. And, and, and that's a, a very helpful way to do that. And also to take them to Bitcoin as more than just a speculative investor, but as someone who sees it as a way of improving and carving out liberty for themselves and for the world. And so, yeah, like that, that's where I, I guess I come back. And then, and then on the subject of, of, of um, you know, the world needs Jesus, I don't disagree, obviously. Uh, but, but I guess my uh, further question is, is uh, um, does the gospel affect cultures? And I think there's a, a sense in which um, the gospel does affect cultures, and how does it affect cultures is by Christians living out the Christian witness in the world. And this is a way that I think I can live out the Christian witness in the world. It's not the only way. It's not even the major way. But it's one way that I can live out the Christian witness in the world is by uh, supporting people learning the philosophy and desire and growing in a desire for liberty. That's a, that is a good um, response to that point. Uh, because you're right. While the world doesn't need anything except Jesus, we are still we're not dead yet um and there's a there are lives to live here on earth until either we die or jesus returns and uh my faith and my opinions that the world needs jesus should dictate how i live in the world um and that has implications in many arenas and the political is one of them yeah that's true yeah and and in many ways you know as i've said sometimes uh some people have accused some of us on the conservative libertarian side of being like, you know, you don't really want libertarianism. You just want your conservative lifestyle. Um, and, and people, some people will really upset, get upset about that and will fight back. But I'm kind of like, no, no, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, that's right. I don't want the state getting in the way of me raising my Christian conservative family uh, because the state hates my family and wants it dead. And I want them out of my business so I can raise my Christian conservative family. Uh, and so, you know, like that's, that's, it, it's a, it's a yes. And I guess. <laughs> Have either of you read, um, live not by lies by, uh, I think it's Robert Dreyer. Rod. Yeah. I have not seen it. Rod. I've not read it. I've seen it, but I have not read it. I, I wrote it down right there. Yep. Yeah. It's Rod. Rod Dreyer. I highly recommend it. Cause that's kind of like bits and pieces of what you said there. Um, Josh has is 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 a uh, uh, an agreement of the foreshadowing that he puts into his books talking about the the totalitarianism that really is here in America but is more and more coming where you you talked about uh, math being racist um that totalitarianism um so much more than it, like just a boring old dictatorship um seeks to uh, uh rewrite reality it's not just it's not just that it wants obedience it 
chooses to redefine what is real and what is fake and it is and it's there um like with the fact that math is racist um um and then it's you know accelerated math programs for the kids who are smart is is some form of oppression um that's i mean it, it, in no logical sphere is that correct but that is a reality that is getting defined right now um and i that book really kind of opened my eyes to the fact like i can now say that as you say those people hate my family like i i used to not really agree with that but like yeah totally they hate the existence of my family because it defies the reality that they are trying to create yeah i mean the egalitarian ideal by definition is anti-family because families are a means of getting ahead what's that oh i thought you were gonna say families have hierarchy well, that too, but but it is a but it's also a means of getting ahead. Like having a good family is not a promise that you're going to have success, but clearly people there's there's clear connections between having a stable, good family life and getting and getting ahead in the world. So whether it's financial success or any other success, having a family that's able to support you is an advantage, and um, and so by definition, an egalitarian movement has to get rid of any advantage that will advantage one person over another, which is why they want us to send all of our kids to public schools and uh, public daycares from the time that they're two, uh, wean them and then send them to the government to raise, because then everyone's being raised the same way. And even there, then there's the additional problem that, that they, they still have not been able to get past it, which is biologically, some people are better than others. And can't get around that. <laughs> I'm sure they're working on it. Maybe that's what that whole pig human chimera stuff is about, uh, is to try and uh, level that. Have you heard about that? Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's one of those, oh, Alex Jones was right. Yeah, oh, Leo Alex Jones right. a fruit basket. <laughs> it's, a, it's all possible because the people who run the Federal Reserve are best friends with the people who are making these decisions and, and running these programs. Oh, yeah. The revolution has corporate sponsorship. Corporate woke sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's. Yeah, Coca Cola is sponsoring the woke mob because uh, it's, it's part of the whole, like, the whole consumerist mentality. Like, that's, that's also, you know, whether it's Federal Reserve or, um, this constant sense of worry and dread or this feeling that you're never, you have no control over your life. So what do you have control over? Buy yourself a Coke. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the, the reason corporations hate your family too, is because families teach you to save and spend your money wisely. But we don't want that. We want people who waste their money, waste their paycheck on Coca Cola. And man, I, I got to tell you on my 2021 bingo card, I did not see woke CIA commercials. Wasn't even on the wasn't even on the board. On the upside, it does make me a little bit happy that the CIA is getting so desperate that they have to run commercials. Like maybe people aren't working there anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah oh, man. So what do you say? We have we talked this topic into the ground? Oh yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't consider the discussion over till the topic's good and dead how would you like how what where's some let's do some let's go around the horn give some last thoughts on the topic of political involvement in general mises caucus in particular uh stuff like that let's go around the horn i think it's nice because even if you feel like you don't have a lot of time you can at least still vote for good candidates I think voting is in general a waste of time, but if you you do exercise your power in your smaller circles that are closer to you, uh, there could be some use. So you know, you start with a, you know, you just you just cast a primary or caucus vote for a good uh, libertarian. You actually have some effect there. You know, you cast a local election vote. You actually have some effect there. You 
maybe cast a state election vote for someone worthwhile. You have some effect there. And then you can write in Kanye at the top for president. It's kind of fun. My thoughts are, I agree that the smaller the governmental structure, um, the more effective your voice is. And that if you can extrapolate that down to, from, from the city to your neighborhood, to your church, to your family, um, both as a Christian and as a libertarian, that's where your um, impact is actually useful um, and can be seen um, in the larger spheres and then, more importantly, throughout the generations. My, my pitch on getting involved, so here's, here's why I would, I would say if, if you're on the fence, even if you're largely agreeing with uh, Darabelli and Rural Rothbard, which, by the way, I do as well. I largely agree with them as well. Um, why you might still consider getting involved in the music caucus. Um, one very simple reason is um, it can be lonely being a lone libertarian in your local area. And so one of the, re- the only, the, or I gotta say the major reason why I got involved in the Libertarian Party in the first place is I just wanted to meet other people like me. Um, and then I found out uh, where they were, which is they were in the Mises Caucus. And so it was a great way to, to meet some more people. I've, I wouldn't say I've made great friends yet in the party, but I'm starting to, to get to know some people. I'm getting to know which people I don't want to get to know, too, and that's, that's useful as well. Uh, half, half the battle. But that can be uh, one thing. It, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but that can be a useful, uh, a useful use of the Mises Caucus. Another reason why is... Um, if you want to see your ideas represented on the national stage, it does not take a ton of effort um, at this point. Like, we're focused on taking over state parties. The, libertarian, the, the next Libertarian Party of Iowa uh, convention is in 2022. And in between there, now and then, there's going to be a caucus, and that's how you get to be a delegate at the state party, is you have to vote in a caucus. So what do you do? Do you have to give a lot of money? No. Do you have to uh, run around campaigning? No, you just find out where you need to go for the Libertarian Party Caucus, um, which I think is usually online because most counties don't have affiliates. Um, cast your vote, sign up to go to the convention, and then look around the room, find the Mises people and say, who actually cares about this crap? Who am I supporting? And uh, find them, support them. That's two days out of your year. And, um, and then the people who do have the time to put into this are going to uh, fight to make sure that your perspective is is represented in the national committee, and then um, and then you can just piggyback off of them and in in sort of you know hey you think that's great you should hear about crypto anarchy you should hear about Bitcoin you should hear about 3D printing you should hear about you know like whatever whatever your um, your corner of the movement is um, or I guess corner of the philosophy I guess you could say, and uh, the third reason is. Um, there is a possibility that uh, a particular candidate will be who has been uh, potentially dipping his feet and his toes in the water uh, might possibly be running for president, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Like I, I think if if you don't know who it is, then just uh, just uh, just you can just tweet. Hey, who's who does Mises, Who's going to be the Mises presidential candidate? And everyone will tell you. Um, but but uh, it, I think our presidential candidate this cycle, if if the person who is toying with it really goes for it, is I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see. Um, he's a great. Uh, I, for one thing, I think it would be great to see him with a ch- with a blue check behind him, and uh, there there is a sense in which this can be a lot of fun, even if you're not even if if it, if all it is is entertainment, getting to follow along and see um, see some comedian roasting a bunch of dweebs on Twitter or on on uh, wherever, like that can be a lot of fun, and so I th- I think it's I think it's gonna be fun. Um, and so those are my, my kind of pitches for, for, for joining up with the Mises Caucus. We don't, uh, you, you don't have to go all in, um, and the result can be you can see your views, your views um, uh, 
represented on the national stage. Um, and then I would also say, though, um, I am by no means going to say that this is the way. I am by no means going to say, um, if you don't do this, you're, you don't care about liberty. I'm not an all or nothing guy on this point. I'm going to say um, there's lots of battles in this, in this war. Find your place. Find the place where you're best able to fight and best able to represent and best able to push um, and, uh, and fight that. But whatever you do, uh, it all starts at home. So the most important thing you can do is uh, get yourself a wife, have some children, raise them to, uh, to reject the state and love Jesus. That's it. Uh, don't we, ever. I think there's a for any reason do anything. There, okay, so so there's a point at which like for um, any reason. Ever, yeah, again, no matter I think what, it comes down to me asking. No like, so what? Where, so uh, uh, who, the libertarian part. Sorry, oof. Let me take a second. <laughs> Another run. That's of that. enough whiskey for you. <laughs>